We have learned about the resolve in Angular UI Router. Let's see how we can make use of the resolve in order to restructure the code of our application to make our controllers more simpler and also uh, make it easier to be able to supply the data to our controllers through the use of the resolve map of dependencies in our app.js file. While we are at it, let's restructure the code within our services.js file so that the factories return the resources. All the factories that we define here return the resources. So the menu factory that I had earlier, I'm going to turn that back from the service to a factory, and then I will make it return only the resource corresponding to the dishes. Similarly, I'll introduce another factory called as the promotion factory and then let that return the resource corresponding to the promotions. As a first step, let's turn the service into a factory again. So to do that, we'll replace the service and uh, turn that into a factory. And then the, the get dishes function that we defined there, we're going to remove that and then let the factory just return the resource. So to do that, Let's remove the this resources and then similarly restructure the code so that the factory simply returns the resource corresponding to dishes. Next, let me introduce a factory corresponding to promotions. So to do that, let me add in the corresponding code here. And so here we have the promotion factory being defined here. And we'll have the promotion factory returning the resource corresponding to promotions. So let me edit the code there and then let that return just the promotions. So with these changes, our services.js uh, file has been restructured such that we have now a menu factory and a promotion factory, each returning the corresponding resource. Now, now that we have made changes to the services.js file, we need to go and fix the controllers so that the controllers no longer use the get dishes and get promotions uh, methods there. Instead, they will simply directly access the menu factory and the um, promotion factory in this case. Switching to controllers.js, let's go into the menu controller and then replace the menu factory.get dishes and then remove the get dishes part from there. Now, the scope dishes is directly using the menu factory and then doing the query on the menu factory because the menu factory is now returning the resource directly. Similarly, wherever we use the menu factory.get dishes earlier in controllers.js, we need to replace that with just menu factory. So let's go ahead and then uh, visit the remaining places and replace uh, the get dishes there. Going to the index controller, we are now going to replace this also with just the menu factory. Similarly, going to the favorites controller, we're going to again update the code to just use menu factory directly there. And finally, in the dish detail controller also, where we are using menu factory.get dishes, I'm going to replace that with just menu factory. Now, in the index controller, we need to now inject the promotion factory because we need we are using promotions here. So let me inject the promotion factory here. So I have added the promotion factory here and also into the, um, the function parameters here. Next, I'm going to replace the menu factory dot get promotion with the promotion factory as seen here. With these changes, now our update to the controllers.js file is complete. Let's save the changes and then we'll go and make sure that our application still works correctly. Moving to our application, we can see that our application still works correctly. So I can go into menu, for example, and add a couple of items into my favorites and then uh, should be able to see them in my favorites and then I can delete items from my favorites just like before and everything works just as 
before. So with the changes, now I have restructured part of the code. Let's now start making, using, uh, making use of the resolve way of injecting the data into our controllers. Switching to app.js, I'm going to first update the favorites state to make use of the resolve. Now, in the, in the case of the favorite state, it is using two of the um, factories, both the favorite factory as well as the menu factory. So I'm going to, uh, to introduce the resolve here to the favorite state. Going to the favorites state in app.js, I have now introduced the resolve into that state. Now inside the resolve, I am now going to introduce two more properties, dishes and favorites, which I'm going to supply to my favorite controller. Inside the resolve in the app.favorites state, you can now see that I have introduced dishes and favorites in the resolve there. So the dishes is um, accessing the menu factory and then returning the result from querying the menu factory. For the favorites, I am returning favorite factories uh, get favorites method. Um, now, we are now going to, to inject both dishes and favorites into our favorites controller. Switching to controllers.js, for the controller, now I no longer need menu factory because I um, have introduced the resolve for my um, app.favorites state. So instead of the menu factory, I'm just going to inject dishes directly here and then let the resolve take care of supplying me the dishes object by resolving it. Um, in addition, I also have favorites that I'm going to in inject here. So after dishes, I'm going to also inject favorites here and then uh, correspondingly add those changes into the function here, dishes and favorites. Now I still need favorite factory to be injected into the favorites controller because I am doing the deletion um, in the favorites controller. So I would still need the favorite factory to be accessible inside the favorites controller. So I'm leaving that as such in my controller. Now that I have introduced dishes and favorites into my controller here, I can go ahead and then simplify the code inside my um, favorites controller. So to do that, let's go into the uh, code of the favorites controller. I'm going to remove this ionic loading. I'm not going to use that anymore. And for the scope favorites, since I have already injected favorites in there, so I'm going to edit that to say scope favorites is equal to favorites. Now, this favorites would have already been resolved because of the use of the resolve in my state. Similarly, for dishes, I no longer need all this complicated code. I can simply set scope.dishes to dishes, which has been injected into my controller. So look in one shot how we have simplified the code in here. We have shifted the resolution into our app.js file there. So with these changes, let's save the changes to controller.js and then we can go and examine the uh, application to see if it still works correctly. Switching to my application, again looking at the menu item, let's add a couple of items to our favorites and then let's see if my favorites works just like before. So as you can see my favorites works just like before. I can now still be able to delete items from my favorites just like before. So the changes that we have made has not broken the application. Everything is well and good so far. Now I'm going to use the same approach 
with the dish detail controller because with the dish detail controller there is a slight uh, difference in the way the resolve is introduced so we'll have a look at that because we need to be able to use the state parameters there so that's why i thought i would show you that also as an example in this exercise switching back to app.js let me now introduce the resolve into the app.dish details state you can now see that i have introduced the resolve into the app.dish details state now let's see how we would actually introduce the dish um, property into the resolve and then let uh, the data get resolved here. Now you can see that I have the dish property inside the resolve that is, res that is being resolved by calling the manufacturer here. Note the way I am making use of the state parameters in order to supply the ID for the get um, method to be executed in the manufacturing. So you see that for the dish, I am using state params and the menu factory, and then the return value saying menu factory dot get, and then in here it says ID parse in state params ID temp. So here, you notice that I am taking the ID that is coming in as the state parameters and then using that to define which particular dish I am retrieving and then um, putting that as the value of the dish data that I am supplying now to the dish detail controller. So now that I have this dish data here, let me go ahead and then change the dish detail controller to make use of this dish. Switching to controllers.js, inside the dish detail controller, I am now going to introduce dish in as a parameter. So both in the uh, inline array as well as as a parameter to the function. I'm introducing the dish here. So which means that for the scope dot dish instead of now calling the menu factory and then doing the resolution, I can replace all this code with simply saying scope dish is dish. So that simplifies my dish detail controller. Note that I still am injecting the menu factory and favorite factory because I need to call some of the other methods of these two um, factories. For the menu factory, when I am saving the dish, I still need to call that. And for favorite factory, I still need to uh, add to favorites and um, uh, so on. So I will still retain them in my dish detail controller. But note that for getting the dish value, the code is significantly simplified. So let's save the changes and then go and have a look at the resulting application and make sure that it works correctly. Switching to my application, you can now notice that the menu items are still being shown. We haven't made any changes there, but when you go to the details of any dish item, the details are being shown just like before. And the dish detail controller is also working correctly. So let's add a couple of items to the favorites. And then let's switch to my favorites. You can still see the um, uh, my favorites. Clicking on any one of those items will take me to the dish details for that. And that is still working correctly. So the updates that I did to my favorites and also the to the dish details works correctly in this case. So with these changes, we have now learned how we can make use of the resolve inside our application to simplify our controllers. Now, you have already noticed that I haven't made the changes for the, the menu page, uh, for the about us, and uh, for the home. I leave that as an exercise for you in the third assignment. With this, we complete this exercise. 
In this exercise, you have seen how we can make use of Resolve, which provides a map of um, um, objects that can be injected into your controller and simplify your controller code.